The swish pattern is an amazingly rapid and powerful new submodality method developed by Richard Bandler. Since the pattern has already been described in a fair amount of detail in the book Using Your Brain for a Change, we don't spend much time on this tape discussing the pattern itself. If you'd like an outline, you can find that in the book. The first segment demonstrates the standard swish, which uses size and brightness in order to connect the cues that have led to the problem behavior to an automatic set of new choices. In this segment, Steve Andreas demonstrates with a client from the second day of an advanced submodalities training in January 1986. While the videotape quality on this piece is not up to our usual standards, we thought that the content of the piece warranted our using it anyway. You'll notice on this first demonstration that the client is initially surprised and a bit shocked at the power that the swish has on her. While this does demonstrate how impactful it is for her, we want you to know that for most people, doing the swish is a very comfortable process. I want to start by demonstrating the swish, and we're going to spend a lot of time in the next two days on the swish pattern. There is what's now called the traditional swish, which I want to start out with because it's simple. And I like to teach simple at first. That's how I learn best anyway. And I think it's how you learn thoroughly. And start out with that, and then we'll go and we'll get fancier and fancier because there are a lot of real slick things you can do with the swish, and you can have very, very powerful uh, impacts on people. And I want to introduce it with a nice little story, one of my favorites. Uh, in the Army once, there was this guy who, one morning, everybody started noticing he was a bit strange. He was so, you know, just go around everywhere, you know, and he just went around, you know. No, 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 no. So they sent him over to Section 8. <laughs> and he's there on the psychiatrist's desk, and he's looking all over the desk, and he's doing all this stuff. And, and no, I don't find it. It's not that. Son, what are you looking for? I don't know. What does it look like? I don't know. I don't know. No. And he's just you know, looking around like this the whole time. So after several sessions, the guy says, well, son, I think the uh, Army's been a little too tough for you. I think we'd better give you a Section 8 discharge. And he hands it over, and the guy says, there it is. <laughs> That's an example of what uh, computer people call feed-forward. You figure out ahead of time what you want, or some kind of goal. It's what's called goals or outcomes. You figure out an outcome, and then you gear your behavior now toward getting that be outcome later. It's a different than feedback. Feedback is you set an outcome and you find out where you are, and then you back kind of then you behave in terms of what happened in the past rather than what happens in the future. And that's what you have to do when you go to the moon. You can't shoot for the moon where it is now, because by the time you get there, it will be somewhere else. So you've got to figure out future time where it's going to be, and aim now so you'll get where it's going to be. <clears throat> that's what the swish is all about. Swish is very much a feed-forward technique. And it's basically very simple. And it has many, many, many ramifications and lots of ways that you can get fancy with it. But we're going to start first with something really simple. And what I prefer to have, we'd like to demonstrate this again for simplicity's sake. And later on, we'll get fancy and apply it to a lot of other things. I prefer to have someone who doesn't know much about it or nothing about it, and somebody who has some simple habit like biting your fingernails. And I want to save yours for a little later. You got one like that? What have you got? I bite my nails. You bite your nails? Great. Come on up. And you don't know much about the swish, right, or anything? Not, I read one time through the yeah. Okay, you might, but, but you haven't done it, huh? Okay, great. Super premium. Erla? Erla. Okay. Do you know when you're biting your nails, or at what times, or? Yeah. 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 Ye
You know, Brian, <coughs> we got something to say. Well, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you have any idea when you do it or what drives you to do it? When I watch TV. When you watch TV. Any other time? I don't have to have this information. I'm kind of curious. I'm just gathering information. My fly paper mind is active. <laughs> When you're nervous. When you're nervous. Okay. So when you're bored. When you're bored. Okay. Great. Now we don't even need to know all that, although that's a possibility for hooking hooking it to those other stimuli. Do you do this consciously or do you just find yourself doing it? Otherwise you just Oh my god. I'm different things, it. different times. Different things, different times. So part of the time. The nice thing about nail biting and for starting simple is that the hand has to come to the mouth, right? The mouth can't go to the hand. <laughs> Pretty much, the hand has to come to the mouth. They've got to get together. And that means it has to come up in the visual field. Even if it's down like this, it's in, <laughs> 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 it's in the visual field. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is simply bring your hand up as if you were going to bite your nails. You don't have to actually bite them. Though. Okay, good. And see what you see as the hand is up there, as it comes up. When I'm looking at you, or as I would normally be? As you would normally. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to look at me. It's not much to look at. <laughs> but can you see yeah. what you see in your visual field from there? Okay, good. So, then can you close your eyes and see the hand the same way? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Super. That's going to be picture number one. Okay? And we'll just kind of set it on the shelf now, or wherever you would like to. Tuck it away. And this is what we call a cue picture. Because we need to attach this to whatever it is that the person does that they don't want to do. The beginning of it, not after they've completed it, but as it's, as it's about to begin. You see, in this case, whatever uh, stimuli, whether it's nervousness or boredom or so on, internal or external, get the hand up there and triggers it. We know that if she wants to stop this behavior, this has to happen, right? So we want to attach it to something that has to always be there if we can, if we can find it. Sometimes you have to fish around and attach it to three or four things because you don't have a always there thing, but we'll get to that later. Okay, second picture, what I'd like you to do is make a picture of the Erla that no longer has this limitation. And this is not, to be, I'm going to be very specific, this is not simply you with longer nails which you would have if you no longer had this limitation. But the Erla, the picture of Erla can be like a portrait. It's not to be of a specific behavior, like twiddling your thumbs instead of biting your nails or anything else. It's, well, let me ask you. Think of something that you know how to do well. You don't even tell me what it is, I don't care. Think of something you do well. Okay? Now, if you look at a picture of yourself, you know that that person has that capability. <coughs> Even though in that picture, this per Erla is not doing whatever it is that you do well. It's like a portrait. But you look at that person and you know that person has capabilities. Okay? That's the kind of picture we want you to think of now. Is the you for whom this fighting nails is simply passe. You have the capabilities, the choices, the whatever it takes to not do this anymore. Okay. Okay. Got that picture? Mm -hmm. Now, as you look at that, does that draw you? Mm -hmm. Great. Now, is there any way you could juice that picture up a little bit, make it really brighten it up a little more, add a little color? <laughs> okay, add a little color or make it a little brighter or something like that. Okay, you got that one? Okay, great. Now. Next, that's that picture number two. And then we have picture number one over here. Okay? Now, what I want you to do is take picture number one and display it here. And in one of the lower corners, and make it big and bright. <coughs> that hand coming up, right? In one of the lower corners, have a sm take this picture and make it <coughs> small and dark. Okay? And then, that's the setup. And then what I want you to do is take the smaller one and have it go whoosh, like that, really fast, and get big and bright as it totally covers up that other picture. 
And the other one can get down and shrink if you want. That really isn't too relevant. Yeah. <laughs> 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 huh? Uh, when you did what? Um, when it got big and took mm -hmm. over the whole picture. Okay. Um, it's it was kind of a shock or a surprise. Okay. And then I, well, I just felt strange. Okay. Was it strange bad or just strange strange? Not comfortable. Not comfortable. Okay. Do you have any idea of what about that was difficult? Or what? It was not difficult to feel uncomfortable. What are you asking? Well, but <laughs> <laughs> how come it's uncomfortable? I'm asking. Do you have any guesses to what made it uncomfortable? I think it was just the, the, the suddenness. Of it? Yeah, the suddenness. Oh, okay. okay. Great. Try it again and see if, if, in fact, that's, because if there's something, see, here's ecology, possibility time. It may be simply uh, surprise, uh, what happened, shock, in which case the next few times you do it won't be a problem. If there's some ecology problem in there, you need to know about it and respect it. So try it again. And let me add one other thing. You start with a small dark picture, the big bright picture of your hand small dark picture of yourself and you go whoosh, like that and then you blank the screen okay okay and then you start over again with the big bright picture of the hand and the small dark picture of yourself and you go whoosh, yeah. okay and then do that about five times i'm going to say three or four more because you've done it once already i just did it twice more i know <laughs> <laughs> Do it a couple more times. What do you think of the paint picture? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. So you can't get the picture in have trouble? Okay, great. Now, so that's one test. Or to be more explicit about it, <laughs> chunk it out. I'd go, try and make the picture of your hand. Now, you know that original big bright picture that you have? Is it gone? Yes. Okay, great. So that's the first test. Because what you're creating here is you're creating what's called a chain or a, uh, a sequence such that every time this comes up, her brain goes somewhere else. So that's the first test is, is in uh, fantasy. In this case, we have a nice second test. Would you bring your, how would, would you bring your hand up? <laughs> what happened? Uh. <laughs> so that's the second test. <laughs> See, we don't have to have her words. Her words might be nice confirmation, and the first few times you do it, it's nice to get the words and find out. How many of you noticed a difference in the way she brought her hand up and what yeah. happened after it got there? Yeah. It's like, it comes up and then it goes, <laughs> what do I do with this thing? <laughs> and usually, and initially, when you first do it, it comes up and it's like right there. It's ready to go, like on the mark. Right? So, okay, ready to go. And typically, when you finish like this, it comes up and then it either kind of jerks back down and goes on hold or it kind of does something that's very different. And it's nonverbal and it's something you didn't ask the person to do, so it's a better indication really than any of the words that the person gives you. Okay, do you have any questions of Erla? Or do you have any questions of me? Where? Where? <laughs> I have a question. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, no, do you have any of her? Uh, well, it's of her. I'll ask her the question. Then. Okay. Uh, do you uh, were both pictures associated or disassociated pictures? Well, that's, that's one for me because I know the answer to that. One. Okay. She doesn't need to be bothered. Do you have any of her? Okay. Yes. Raise your left hand. I was thinking about the same thing. I wondered if you were saying. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've never thought of that. If someone was really, really narrow contextualized, I suppose you could fix them on one hand and not on the other. <laughs> never even thought of that possibility. I suppose it's a possibility. I haven't encountered it yet. Usually people are willing, are able to generalize like that. Do you have any other questions of Earl first?
Did the quality or some modalities of the second picture change any as you went through the the repetition? Repetitions. Less intensive. Every time I do it, it's less intense. The the, fi the final outcome after they were combined. Is that what you were asking? Yeah, the picture that got larger. Yeah, it became less <coughs> intense every time. Which is another way of saying it, more unconscious. I think. Okay. That's how I would say I had a similar experience and I just... Okay. It doesn't make any difference uh, in which picture you put the... which corner you put the outcome picture. As far as I know. No difference. Seems to be better on the lower corner, but whether it's left or right. I've heard Richard do it a number of ways, and I've tried it different ways, and it seems seem better. You can even have it come out of the middle of the picture. You can do a lot of stuff. But it seems to be better to have it from down going up. That seems to be... Anyway, that's... any other questions for her? Uh, what? Okay. What was... Uh, what? Uh, tell us about the context or circumstances in which uh, male body... Uh, okay. So, watching TV is one of them? When I was bored, watching TV, or when I was nervous? Nervous to temporal shift, watch, and mm -hmm. Okay, good one. Oh, nice. Yes. <laughs> that was good. What was the question? He questioned, uh, he said, tell us about the context in which you bite, bite your nails, and she answered, was. And earlier she did say, yeah, mm -hmm. when I am watching television. Uh -huh. This is a lovely way to check your work. Mm -hmm. It's also a way to, to do your work. Mm -hmm. If you have any weird things that work on smoking. Oh, we have a lot of things. weird things that work on smoking. And I, uh, I welcome you to try this one in the exercise. Because I have done it. I did The first time I learned to swish, and I didn't understand beans about it. I just thought, what the hell? We were going in doing some typography, and my the gal who does typography for us uh, smoked at that time a couple of packs a day. And I did this thing with her for three minutes, and she cut down immediately to one to three cigarettes a day, which at that time was satisfactory for her. That was okay with her. And then it sort of started creeping up again. And then Connie Ray did some work with her after we really understood how to make this thing go. And when she was done, she has not smoked since. She even tried to smoke a cigarette, got halfway through and spit it out. I mean, it was just gone. Now, that won't work for all. Smoking is a com much more complex one, and it won't always work. And in fact, this standard switch that I'm talking about will only work about 70% of the time for reasons which we'll go into, and we'll, we'll teach you how you make it work 100% of the time. Yeah? That's what I want. I've had that done for smoking on my Okay. Show. It worked completely. For three minutes, I didn't want one. Mm -hmm. Ninety-five. It's like I never smoked. Mm -hmm. Well, how long did it take you to do that? For me to do it? Yes. I didn't do it. I had to. Somebody did it. Done. How long did it take for them to do it? See, five minutes five every minutes three months might not be too bad. <laughs> Such a schedule. <laughs> you know, every three months you go back and you spend five minutes. You manicure your nails more often than that. It probably takes as long. So that's one possibility. Another possibility is to do it differently such that it's permanent.